Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to be going over the Adobe Premiere toolbar and explaining all the tools within it. So by default, the toolbar is located just to the left of your timeline. You can always expand it out to make it bigger or make it like that. Or if you want, you can drag it into another location if you so happen to want it somewhere else. But just sticking with the default view, these are all the tools starting with the selection tool. And you'll notice when you do flip through them, your mouse cursor will change to that tool icon when you're working in the timeline. There's also a few other buttons like these little toggle options in the actual timeline, such as whether you want your clips to snap to each other or not, which do affect how some of the tools work, but we're going to leave those. Those are somewhat self-explanatory and also some of the, the ripple delete and other shortcut options do get determined by what tracks are highlighted and active. You see I'm actively highlighting some blue. So also keep that in mind, those play together. But starting at the top, we probably have our most important tool, which is the selection tool. And you notice when I hover over it, it also shows you the shortcut, which is V. That's very useful because if you're ever working with another tool, so many times you don't want to go all the way back here and just click it. You're just going to press V and go right back to your selection tool because you're going to be working back and forth quickly. But the selection tool not only allows you to highlight clips, move them around, select and make different clips active so you can view their effects control panel and different things about them. But it also works great as your standard trimming tool. So if I ever want to trim the ends of a clip, I can just do that with the selection tool active. Very useful. You can also select spaces in between clips and I can just press delete on the keyboard to delete those and get clips back together. Your selection tool will also allow you to adjust clip keyframes, this little line here on clips when you expand the track out. And if you hold shift and select multiple things at once, you can select out different layers such as that. So your selection tool, you're going to be using this tool for most of the time editing. So very important, get comfortable with it. Now the next tool I'm actually going to jump to is the razor tool just because I feel like this is the second most important when it comes to editing. You have your selection and cut tool. So you kind of want to think of these as your back and forth, most powerful, most useful tools. And to get to this tool is just C. So a really useful thing to remember is just C, V. You can switch between V, move tool, C, cut tool. And so you can quickly switch back and forth between C and V, cut and select. But when you do have your cut tool activated, it just allows you to click and make cuts on any section of the clip. And then you can press V to get your selection tool and then move around those cuts or maybe delete cuts that you made that you didn't want. But your razor tool is pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice if I just press once on the clip, it doesn't, it only cuts the clip. But if you hold shift while you have the cut tool active, it'll cut through all of your tracks. So that can be useful when you are trying to move a bunch of stuff or cut through everything in the middle and not just one track or one layer. Another way that you can just shortcut for cutting is command K. That will also just cut through everything, but based on where your timeline marker is at. And if you have multiple tracks, again, shift command K will cut through everything, not just the one track. So you can actually use those cutting shortcuts even if you don't have your cut tool activated, but that's basically the cut tool. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can just remember to toggle shift sometimes or use those shortcuts if you want. Now the rest of them, I'm just going to go back down in order. You'll notice that some of them, if you press and hold, it'll actually drop down a menu of some alternate tools. So you see the little arrow that lets you know there's more things behind that tool. So these two are the track select forward and backward tools, and they're pretty self-explanatory. If I just click and drag, it'll move everything on this whole track forward. So this can be a great way to push and make space rather than having to grab the select tool and then highlighting everything and moving it, which is also pretty handy. But if you have a really long track with lots of things, sometimes you might just want to use the track select forward. You can move everything forward from a certain point and you see it's just based on the point that my mouse is at. Or you also have the track select backwards tool. It's the same idea, except it'll move everything backwards from a certain point and you can actually go and kind of go in both directions, but it's just pushing based on where your cursor is at, taking all the clips before or after a certain point and moving them all. So a useful way to just push entire tracks and make space. Next up, we have the ripple edit tool. So 
if I just grab my selection tool for a moment, I'll show you the concept of a ripple delete is, for example, this space here, if I delete it and it'll snap everything forward back together. Or if I'm working on a clip such as this and I press Q on my keyboard, it'll take everything from this timeline all the way to the cut and delete it. And likewise, if I press W, it'll take everything from this time push it forward to the next cut and delete it, but it keeps the in points the same basically. And remember, whenever you see these little triangles on the clips, that means that it's the true end of the clip or not. You see there's nothing left to expand, but this clip you see it doesn't have those little end caps in the corner. That means there is more to expand out, more information. So when you are working with clips that have more information left to expand out, you can use the ripple edit tool to simply push forward, it'll create space in that case. Rather than if you had to do the selection tool, you'd simply have to overwrite parts of the other clip. With the ripple edit, it doesn't just overwrite, you can just push things forward or backward. See if I wanted to trim this clip even more, it'll just bring everything forward with it. Whereas if I was doing it with the selection tool again, it would trim this clip, but I would then have to either bring everything forward or ripple delete it, so it just saves you that step there. Similarly, we have the rolling edit tool. So this one is kind of like doing two things at once. It's pushing that other clip out and pushing the other clip in. And you see, if we tried to do this with just the selection tool, then I would have to do two separate steps. I would have to push one clip out and then the other in, and then push one clip in and then the other out to get the same result. Whereas with the rolling, edit tool, we can simply do that with one tool like this. Now the next thing that's tucked in here is the rate stretch tool, which is really useful actually. This will allow us to trim a clip, but it's not trimming it. It's actually taking the entire clip and stretching it down and speeding it up. So you see now when I play this clip back, everything's kind of in fast forward motion and we still have the entire clip. It's just been sped up. So this is a, if I right click any time and click speed duration, we can actually see how much it's been sped up. So 430% I did, about 4x speed. And also in this little menu here, you can always just enter either speed percentages or durations that you want it sped up to, like three seconds exactly. You can also reverse and do other things, but the rate stretch tool is very useful because sometimes you don't want to do right click speed. Sometimes you just want to stretch a clip out as far as you need and you can stretch a clip out as far as you need. So in this case, we've slowed it down to 53%. You can see there, and it'll tell us next to the clip name. If you ever want to just get it back to normal, you can just go to speed, duration, 100%, and you'll see the clip will go back to normal. Now, next up, we have the slip and the slide tool. I've actually got a full separate tutorial I've done for an in-depth example on this, but basically what this tool does, so firstly, the slip tool allows you to sl like slip a clip in the same place but adjust the in and out point. Now a really easy way I can demonstrate what this is doing for you is if I just show you on two different tracks, I'll take this track and this track, put it forward, and you know that this clip has more information underneath it, like this much information, but since the way that layers work, you see the top layers over top of the bottom ones, almost like a top down helicopter view sandwich. So if I were to move just with the regular selection tool, this clip in and out of this little pocket we've created, we see that we still will always get the same out and in points, but we're just adjusting kind of the meat of the clip that's being seen. And what the slip tool does is it just allows you to do that, but in place. So it's the same thing happening, but in this case, I'm just doing it in place. I'm sliding the in and out points of that clip, but keeping the same cuts before and after. The slide tool is kind of the opposite of that. Instead of moving this clip, we're keeping this clip the same, but we're sliding the clips around it back and forward. So the slide tool, you can use it to keep this center clip the same, but slide it in and out of other sections. You can also just do one end of the clip at a time. An easy example to see this is at the beginning of the clip, if I wanted to extend out this original clip a little bit more to the left, 
I can simply slide it over and it will push everything else over too. And you'll notice you can't really stretch further than ends of the clip, so keep that in mind. Another thing I'll mention is you'll notice whenever I do move stuff and it's not move, I haven't highlighted both the audio and the video, these little red markers that say plus one or plus two, it's just telling me that my audio and my video are now one second delayed forward. So do keep in mind if you do want to keep your audios aligned, you'll, you might want to make sure you have both of them highlighted before you start slipping and sliding things. But you'll see once I did realign them, those second markers went away. So I have a full tutorial on that. If you're still confused and want another example, you can check it out on my channel. The next tool we have is the pen tool. And also underneath that, we have some shape tools like rectangle and ellipse. So with the pen tool, if I'm in the program window, I can simply click and draw shapes. And in the essential graphics panel, I can actually adjust a lot of different things about the shape, like the fill color, the stroke, the outline and size and things like that. And you'll see it actually creates this graphic layer. So also this is where I'm going to press V, move to my move tool real quick and I can move this graphic layer around. And also I can use my move tool to adjust things about this layer as well. So that's another handy tip to be moving back to the, and forth between the selection tool. Aside from the pen tool, which allows you to make custom shapes, you also just have the rectangle and ellipse. So I can make rectangles and ellipse. If I hold shift, you'll notice I can get a perfect circle. Keep that in mind. And I can see all of the different shape layers that I've created in the essential graphics panel, all within this one graphic layer. So if I want to turn the visibility of one off, if I want to change the layer order so that the circle is in front of everything else or behind everything else, I can do that. And you have other tools like centering, aligning, and whatnot. So these can be cool for creating text box shapes. Next, we have the zoom and hand tool. You won't really be reaching these too often, honestly. Um, the hand tool allows you to move the timeline around, but honestly, you can also just scroll left and right, depending on what kind of mouse you have. Or if you have the zoom tool, it allows you to zoom into a certain section. Or if you hold option, it allows you to click and zoom out of a certain section. But honestly, just get familiar with the keyboard shortcuts plus and minus, or just on the bottom here, you can pull this little slider in and out. That's usually how I do it. And I usually just keep my selection tool. And if you ever want to move around, you can pull this out and zoom out or pull it in and move around however you like. So I personally don't reach for these too much, but they are there if you want. You can get from there with the shortcut H and V, move back around. Also remember within your Premiere Pro preferences on the timeline section, there's a couple things you can change about the way that the timeline scrolls and the way that your mouse scrolls from vertical to horizontal. So you can play around with some of these settings if, if you can work better in those workflows. I typically tend to stick with mostly default workflows for everything. And then lastly, we have the text tool. Pretty self-explanatory. You can click just like the shapes, make sure you're in the program window and you can type out text and it will make a new graphic layer just like the shapes and you have all the same tools and options to align, change the font and character size, and do whatever you want with these. So you have your horizontal text tool, and also you have your vertical type tool, if you wanna type this way as well. And you can see them all in layers in that graphic. If you did want to make sure they're in separate layers, just move out of that graphic layer, or move the timeline somewhere else, and then click, and it'll make a new graphic layer. But that's everything in the Premiere Pro toolbar explained. This is just a couple examples for each. You can get familiar and practice and play around with them more so you can understand what's going on. And there's a little bit more details to some of them. So check out my tutorial for the slip and slide tool to get a little bit more info on what's going on. And some of my videos on shortcuts to get familiar with all the different shortcuts like ripple, delete, and trim, which I showed you here. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely check out a bunch of the other videos in the playlist on my channel and subscribe here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.